The following is intended for mature audiences only. Discretion is advised. I had to order seven colors of like the same color palette because they were all called like barley wheat ass and bottom of a shoe. It was like sage pea soup without the ham. Hey everybody, it's Teresa. Welcome to Exaggerated. Let's get into it. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Exaggerated. I'm so glad that you're here. I am so excited to sit down with you guys and do an episode. This week was so crazy, so like just all over the place. And I feel like I have a million projects going at once, personal work, family, et cetera. And like maybe in this like season of life, like settling a house, raising a two-year-old, keeping my marriage a marriage, um, you know, working as an actress, working as a model, uh, working to make money. Like, it's just like comedy, like maybe every day will always feel like I'm just like (gasps) barely coming up for air. I don't know. Like, obviously it's me. It's not, you know, Um, but the, it's so funny because I, I have like such like all over the place, like ADHD because like the, I just like redid, not redid, I did the curtains for all the windows in the house. And I like just got the notification before I started recording that they were delivered. And I'm like, Oh, I gotta go. I can't do this right now. I gotta go do the curtains right this second. And, um, it's really funny because one time I asked my old therapist, I was like, do you think I have ADHD? Like I was, (laughs) I was like looking on TikTok and, you know, I was like being like a TikTok psychologist and I was like, I do, this is all the things I do. I was like, I'll literally walk into the kitchen for a snack and emerge an hour later. And I like cleaned the oven and the baby's like sterilizer. And I remember her being like, I think that's just being a new mom. And I was like, no, I don't think that has anything to do with my new baby. Like she was like, nope, that's just mom brain. And I was like, I think that's pretty much okay. Anyway, um, so yeah, so now I can't wait. I I don't want to say I can't wait for this to be over because like obviously that's not the case, but I'm like so excited to put the curtains up because I have been like, you know, I've been doing all the viral curtains on Amazon and I've ordered from Anthropology and like a couple other places. But I think the funniest thing about buying curtains is like all the marketing around them. Like everyone tries to be like, fancy about their like labeling and I'm like I get that it needs to be more detailed than like red green blue and then like write the length but how much more detailed because I'm trying to buy curtains and I just know that I need like a brownish topish camel khaki straw color ish really neutral not cream or ivory and all the color, I had to order seven colors of like the same color palette because they were all called like barley wheat ass and bottom of a shoe. Like those were the names. They were like, um, it was like, instead of being like green, light green, dark green, it was like sage pea soup without the ham. And I was like, I don't, I kind of know what color that is. And in a weird way, that's the descriptions. I, I'm so torn because I'm like, oh, I know exactly what color that is. Because there's like a diner on 14th Street that makes split pea soup without the ham bone so that it's vegan. And um, it is a specific shade of green. So props to that person. But like, we need to be like a little more normal with names because I ordered a color that was called, wait for it, Heaven's Breath what i thought okay so firstly if you're religious heaven is a place so doesn't it have a lot of colors also it has breath and it was like a and and to me if you're saying something is the color of breath that's like air so i'm thinking oh a sheer white no no they were like taupe velvet heaven's breath who is sitting at their kitchen table naming these things and then and then one was um barley field Miss, I don't know what barley is and there's no fields around me. Why did you send me purple curtains? What are we doing? What's going on? So my curtains came that are like sage whale ass and I'm waiting to see what color they are. I'm really excited to open the box. Hope I don't pull out dark charcoal because I'm hoping that they're like a really light airy green. And I was like, whale ass. That sounds like the shade of green I need. Dear God. So anyway, I had to get that out of my brain because now I'm so obsessed 
and so hyper fixated on the curtains that it's all I think about. I'll be like literally waiting to go into an audition and I'm like, I should just Google taupe velvet curtains one more time. And my friend is like, maybe you should learn your lines. And I'm like, I, I can only think about the curtains. Anyway, um, the weather has been really nice lately, so I don't want this to come off as a weather complaint, but we had a freaking thunderstorm this morning that almost blew me out of the out of town. Okay. I almost had to relocate because I got swept up in a tornado. Okay. And here's my problem with that. One, I had somewhere to be. I don't think people care. Like people are like, whatever, weather doesn't affect me. Yeah, because you don't have a job. Like you don't have anywhere to be. I had somewhere to be and it was lashing rain and it was the height of the rain. Okay. I had to exit my house like Dorothy and Toto in the tornado getting swept up into Oz. Okay. Because the height of the the storm was 1015. Guess what time I had to walk out of my house? 1014 and a half. Okay. So I had to leave my house in rain boots, a rain jacket, an umbrella. It's also 79 degrees. That's why it thunderstormed humidity. Come on, earth science, let's go. Let's go. So I'm now cooking in my rain garb. And tell me why I got off the train seven stops later and it was a sunny summer day. So now I'm the asshole walking around in my clop and rain boots that I bought when I was nine months pregnant because it was January and I couldn't walk through the slush and none of my shoes fit. So now they wobble flop flop off my feet. They're way too big. Hey, Teresa, maybe you should give them away. Maybe you should donate the giant rain shoes. Well, then I ask you, what would I wear when it rains? I didn't know it was going to be sunny. So now I'm clown clopping down the street, okay? My shoes are flip flapping like the flip flops I told you not to wear a couple episodes ago. And I tripped and fell. Yeah, you heard that right. I fell down and I smashed my knee. And listen, I might look like a juicy lady in some parts of me, but I got knobby knees. I got knobby, sticky knees and they're cut now. And I wasn't even wearing shorts. I had pants. I mean, I had pants. I had socks. I had a freaking long coat. I was I was ready for the mountains. And it was 7 million degrees and dry. Everyone was probably like, where'd she? What time machine did she just slip out of? She just came out of a monsoon. Um, and I freaking fell. And I hurt my knee. And I was like, ow. So that means I had a bad day. And I need a gift. So I don't know. What should I buy, guys? Let me know. DM me. Let me know what I should buy myself. But yeah, that's the most annoying thing in the world is like you get dressed for the rain and you're like locked and loaded. You're ready to to dive into an ocean. You're so waterproofed. And then what? And then it becomes sunny again and the birds are chirping. You can hear them right now. And here I am in my my spandex and my rubber and my lycra like like a, looking like Scarlett Johansson in some superhero movie in the middle of Midtown. For what? Sweating my ass off for five minutes rain. But if I left the house and I was like, ah, whatever, I'm not going to bring an umbrella. I'm not going to wear rain boots. I'm not going to wear a trench coat. What would I have looked like? A seal in SeaWorld under the water. There was so much freaking water. Okay? So what do you do? What What's the answer? And, and somebody's going to say, no fucking fail. Okay. Someone is going to be like, bring a change of clothes. Bring a change of shoes. Hey, hey, why don't you bring a summer outfit and a rain outfit and put it where? Put it where? Just carry my three sizes too big rubber boots. I should really throw those boots out. They're good boots, though. Really good boots. Um, And it's so funny because they were so tight on me. And you always hear that like in pregnancy, your feet swell and la-di-da. But I was like, eh, how much could they possibly swell? Oh, apparently a lot. Because if I jiggle my foot the right way, this this shoe flips right off of me. It does somersaults and leaves me. It needs to be someone else's shoe. So like, what do you do? What would you wear? I guess the answer is like, to bring a change of shoes and then maybe bring like, I don't know, like a tote bag with you. Cause where are you going to put the shoes in your purse and put them in your backpack? 
put your wet rubber shoes in the backpack. Oh, hey, what do you got in your back? Wow, your backpack's so full, isn't it heavy? Yeah, just carrying my rubbers. Oh, I'm so over it. You know, when you're so over it, look at my nails, guys. If you're watching on uh, YouTube, my nails are short, short as my nails have been since I was born, okay? I had to do a shoot for this company. And I'm not complaining because it's money and a job and I was grateful to do it. Uh, But they needed my nails to be like, plain and whatever and like my nails are always like pretty plain they're just like nude or clear but they're super long and they're my own nails and I'm proud of that and I love my nails long for some reason my mom always had long nails I wonder if that's correlated like I'm am I living out some like childhood comfort by having my nails long probably I like scratch my own arm and I'm like mommy um but yeah it's like so they call me the night before. Now, this has happened to me no less than one million times because I don't listen. Working as like a the level, I should say the level that I'm at acting and modeling, like sometimes you get a little last minute gig and you don't know that you're going to get it. You get hired like the night before or the day before. And they're like, just a clean, plain nails. I should have no nails on at all times. That's what most actors do because they're like responsible and good at their job. And I'm a hot, sloppy mess. And I'm like, no, I really want long talons that are colored orange and green with prints on them. But actually, my nails were just super long and they were nude. And they were like, no, those are a little too sticky, a little too for our brand. And I was like, really? are you sure? Um, and they were like, yeah, they'll need to be cut down. So I had to go to the salon with the most perfect two day old manicure. My manicure was two days old. Okay. Ladies, listen to me now. If you're a man and you're listening to this, shut the fuck up. Stop listening. I don't care. Um, just kidding. Maybe you're a man with really long nails. Um, I had this gorgeous, long, voluptuous, snarl tooth, gorgeous, rosy, nude, long talon nails. Were they a bit too long? Yeah, they were. Could I do barely anything with them? I could not. It was like a good excuse to tell my husband to do the dishes because I can't. Um, But they looked so beautiful. 1.5 days later, 1.5 days later, um, I got this job and they asked them to look like this. They wanted it to look as if I could, um, I don't know, do some something I was gonna say my sister's gonna laugh when she hears this because she knows what I was gonna say but I'm not gonna say it on here um but anyway I um I had to get these like short nails and that's fine because I need money and I needed the job and I was happy to do it and this has happened to me one billion times before I started doing like print work when I was eight years old I have had so many times I've had to like take some gel manicure off or something. And uh, one of the bookers was like, oh, that's just because the brand needs something plain. This is typical behavior. And I wanted to be like, I've been in this business for 160 years. I know I've had to do this before. I know it's my fault. I didn't even fight them. Like they were like, couldn't they were actually like this, this and this. Could you make them short? And I was like, yeah, no, I know. I get it. That's what's so kicking and screaming annoying about it. Because 1.5 days later, I went back to nail salon. I was like, hi, could you make them look like this? And I showed them a Pinterest picture of like a basic bitch Emily hand just about to get engaged. And I was like, can you make them look like this? And the guy went, why? (laughs) He was like, what's the matter? Because they literally looked so perfect and they were so brand new from just a couple days ago. And I was like, I got a job. And he was like, sure, you did. Like, they just look at me like I'm an insane person. I was like, I'm a hand model today what they were like what where don't know your nails are fine and I was like okay forget it so anyway that's that this week so it was just like a little craziness with that um also I feel like this feels like haphazard and crazy and like energies all over the place and that's because it is because I'm excited about the curtains and I can't wait to hang them up and also I think when they chopped my nails off they chopped my brain off like a p like I think my brain goes through there Um, and now I'm like short circuiting because I have this, like I'm, I'm a new person now. Like my nails usually say like, Oh, Hey, I don't give a fuck about you. I could scratch your eyes out. Sup. Oh, this hand. It's so long. I can reach you from across the room because my fingers have an extra six to 10 inches. And these nails say, oh my God, sorry. Did you hear me correctly? I'm so sorry. Hey, I asked a question. Now I'm going to say, does that make sense? I'm so sorry. Oh my god, look at my little nano. That's <laughs> that's how I feel with these nails. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. He, he, does that make sense? He, this is my first time getting my nails painted. It's my wedding. Um, no, it's really fine. I'm just joking around, guys. Just having a silly goose time. Um, I don't know. Let's get into the ick and the love, and then I'm gonna go hang my curtains. <laughs> uh, um, so here's my ick. 
and I don't know if I'm saying this word right, but <laughs> you're like, use a different one. But you know, when people like gas up their job, like a very super flow, it's super flowous, right? Like a super flowous, super flowous, super like extra, extra over the top job description, right? Like it's like if you're like a Starbucks barista, right? Like you're like, I work at Starbucks and I pour coffee and whatever. I make the sandwiches. I, I make the drinks and they're like, oh, hey, what's your job? And they're like, well, I'm an energetic, high powered liquid caffeine supplier. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's like they it's like a LinkedIn, like long job description. Like, I hate that shit. Just like say what you do. Like, no one is impressed. You know, like you always run into these people who are like, hi, I'm a chief communicating community marketer officer of happiness. And you're like, where? And they're like this new startup downtown. I'm like, oh, you're going to get fired in six weeks. Got it. Got it. Cool. Best of luck to you. They like went to school for 46 years. And I'm like, I don't what? And they're like trying to make you feel dumb because you're like, wait, what's that? And they're like, oh, my God. She doesn't know what the chief happy communicator is. Oh, awkward for you. I'm a CEO of joy in my job. Like, no, don't do that. Um, and then my love is just summer. It's been so nice out. It's been it's been sunny and nice. And you could just walk outside with the clothes on your back and maybe your phone because we're never off them and our credit cards are on them now and you might want an iced coffee. But I'm just loving the weather and the sun. And uh, soon I'm going to complain that it's too hot. It's just the truth of it. You know, it's just it's just par for the course. Um, so right now I'm I'm enjoying it. Um, it was just like Memorial Day weekend. It's been like night. Uh, it's just here we go, baby. Summer, summer two, two K two four. It's going to be a wild one. No, it's not. I'm going to be in a toddler pool on my balcony, splashing my feet in a blow up unicorn happier than I've ever been. I love you all so much. Thank you so much for listening. Share this podcast with somebody. Reach out to me on Instagram, TikTok, all the platforms at Timo Lynn. Also, Beverly has sketch shows coming up in New York City, June 19th at Young Ethel's, June 29th at The Pit. I also have an improv show June 22nd at The Pit with my comedy partner. We're the Cusimanos, crazy Italian parents that you guys see on Instagram. That is going to be a live show. So June 19th, June 29th in New York City. Check out my Instagram for those dates. Come see live comedy. I love you all so much. Have the greatest week. And remember, it's all a little bit exaggerated. Bye. This has been Exaggerated. Thanks for sticking around till the end. Follow me on social media at Timo Lin. That's T-M-O-L-Y-N-N. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Oh, and join the conversation by emailing me at exaggeratedpod at gmail.com. Until next time, don't forget... It's all a bit exaggerated.